Hello. I want to talk about this talk before I talk it. <laughs> I'm a little bit apprehensive about having this talk and a little scared as well, if I'm honest. You see, nothing that I'm going to present to you tonight is in any means new or remarkable. And from my perspective, I actually cannot fathom why most companies and studios today aren't more human-centered. Furthermore, I cannot understand why they can't be or they wouldn't want to be. I own and operate a creative production studio called Batch. I keep the lights on without demanding overtime. I've been able to scale and grow Batch by treating people I choose to work with with respect. And I don't mean, hey girl, thanks for the cool work, I'll buy you a beer kind of respect. I mean the kind of respect where I can recognize that human is an individual with different views, opinions, and beliefs than my own, and still choose to treat her the way that I would like to be treated. I mean, what's the fucking big deal, right? The truth is, it's hard to be kind. It's hard to be respectful, and it's even harder to be human nowadays. Having a healthy professional environment is actually not as normal as we'd like to think. We live in a society where people don't feel shame for acting like colossal twats, and we're taking accountability for the consequences their actions have on others are easily dismissed by a phrase like, I'm not responsible for how I make you feel. Or, don't be so insecure, it's just a joke. It's toxic. Despite this, we all know how we want to be treated. We all know how we'd like our professional environment to be. The realization that it's not, though, can be quite defeating. It has left me feeling quite helpless quite often in my noble quest for change. That was a joke, by the way, my quest isn't noble. <laughs> I've been the underpaid creative, burning out on a project due to crazy and a crazy overtime and silly work expectations, grafting my ass off on a Saturday afternoon in the studio, knowing that there's no way in hell this client's going to check out this whip I'm sending them later until Monday after their meetings and like seven shots of coffee. I know how hard it is to speak up when I witness something really twisted happen in a professional environment. I also know what it's like to emotionally crack and quit everything after months of harassment and mistreatment. And you best believe I still turned around and thanked them for the opportunity to grow and learn, like I owed them any form of grace or kindness. What I want to share with you today is so important to me that it overshadows my own apprehension and fear I have about this topic. I do not expect any one of you to agree with me 100% or to even disagree with me 100%. I am asking you, regardless whether of you are an employee or an employer, to consider what I have to say. Because I truly believe that we all deserve a safe and neutral space to work and grow. The time for just doing what the client says and burning out our teams because of ridiculous timelines and budgets is over. The time for just being grateful for the opportunity, regardless of how much it costs you mentally, physically and emotionally, is over. There are four major touch points that I will be unpacking tonight. They are starting over, structure, hierarchy, growth and autonomy. 
Starting over means redefining and changing the way you are used to naturally do things. You need to become aware of what you'd prefer versus how it's been working for a certain amount of years. Else you're just going to be settling for the same shit on a different day. You have to be proactive. Why wait until an employee is pregnant, or even worse, suffers a miscarriage before scrambling to get a maternity policy together? Why wait until you're knee deep in a project, doing hectic amounts of overtime and burning out before talking to your managers or heads of departments about overtime and how it is catered for? We should be, oops, we should be discussing these things in the interview phase. It's our, responsibility, it's our responsibility to not settle for the Friday staff lunch as a payoff anymore. That joke is old, it's dead, and it doesn't benefit the employer or the employee. I cannot stress what Lene said enough here. We need to set a new standard of doing things, and it has to come from both parties. If each of us can reach a point where we are willing to recognize ourselves as humans, allowed to have different backgrounds, preferences, opinions, and beliefs, allowed to have a safe and neutral space where we can grow and our professional needs are met, allowed to have lives and relationships outside of our work, regardless of whether you're an employer or an employee, the game changes. You cannot have a healthy professional environment if your values don't include empathy and compassion. You cannot have a healthy professional environment if your actions do not match your words. You cannot have a healthy professional environment if you do not provide clear boundaries and structures for everyone in your company to work with. You cannot have a healthy professional environment if you do not feel safe. Let me be as clear as I can. There must never be any gray areas. Define the kind of space you want to own and create it. Define the kind of space you want to work in and find it. If you disagree, negotiate. If something is unclear, ask. And if your negotiations or questions are met with any form of defensiveness or aggression, you have your answer. Simple, not so much. If you want to achieve any of the above, you will have to turn towards yourself, do a bit of work and become a bit more self-aware. And that's a lot of fucking work, ask me. <laughs> because you cannot stand for something if you don't believe in anything. You cannot disagree if you are agreeable. You cannot negotiate if you do not have any terms. And you cannot be or create change if you have not defined what that would mean for you. Okay, now that I'm off of my soapbox, let's get dirty and break it down by looking at the structures I've created and implemented at Batch. Everybody can take a deep breath if she's done being serious. <laughs> All right. This is how we define a structure. A structure is a group of parameters, policies, values, and guidelines that gives anyone entering and currently inside of your company a foundational starting point. We've created a platform called My Batch. Everyone in the studio has got access to it, and it functions as our home base. Inside of our home base, we have any and everything, stretching from our leadership philosophy to our in-studio developmental and growth program called the Batch Academy. I am, however, going to focus on the ones that you can see on the screen here tonight. There's no point at doing or making anything if you cannot understand why you are doing it. It's equally important that you give your employees the insight to the why of your company. Because if everybody can see where you are going, then everyone can help you get there together. 
Your vision doesn't need to be profound or overtly intellectual. It aims to solve a simple problem. Your vision then feeds your mission and it pushes you into the bigger scheme of things. The next thing to determine are your values. Values are the keystones on which the culture of your company is built. By offering your employees insights into these aspects, you give them the opportunity and accountability to align with you and your overarching goals. The bigger picture then starts to act as a compass, keeping everybody on track. Remember one thing though, failing to align yourself and your actions with your own values not only makes you a hypocrite, but it gives your employees the permission to call you one. Creating a handbook further strengthens your structure because it can provide clear guidelines on how things work in your professional environment. Our handbook covers the following. Our approach, attitude and tone. Our studio standards, like how we set up files and how we share them between one another. It also covers how the feedback and review process work, but most importantly, it covers how to not go about things, which in my opinion is the most important thing, right? We look at how to set up files, how to name them, doing version control, how to back up your work, how to grow in the studio and upskill, and lastly, how to make use of human resources. On this topic, I will just pause briefly, and that is because it is a Pandora's box for me. <laughs> if the company or studio you work for has no HR support, <laughs> if you have anyone working for you, whom you pay a monthly salary like the AYE and all of that shit, and you do not have HR support, you are in danger. If you as the employer has HR, but uses, it, but uses it so you can get insights and infringe on the professional privacy issues and opinions of your employees. Anyone want to guess what's going to happen? <laughs> A lack of HR equals gray areas. Gray areas equals loopholes. And all of that sets you up for misunderstandings and some damage. In this remote day and age, there really is no excuse to not have an HR professional in your studio. They don't have to be full-time, they can be contract. Simply because employers cannot take on the qualms and problems their employees are having because they cannot truly be non-biased. Employees cannot vent and unpack issues to peers and managers and expect them to handle it in a professional manner. HR supports both the employer and the employee and is essential for company culture and to maintain a healthy working environment. You are not safe in your working environment if your employer does not have HR and is not open to getting in. If you want to know who you really work for, or who you really are going to be working for, you need to get your eyes on these, or at the very least, make sure they exist. <laughs> and a breakdown of them is open for discussion during your interview. Regardless of whether you are male or female, you are going to go right to the beginning and look at the maternity policy. In South Africa, employers are not required to provide any kind of maternity payment or support. So seeing whether your employer or prospective employer has added anything beyond the minimum that is required will open your eyes. The next checkpoint is to look at overtime. In South Africa, employees above a specific income bracket are not liable for overtime. In the same breath, they are also allowed to refuse overtime because their employers don't legally need to pay them for it. So what do we do? You follow the same principles as the maternity policy. You need to figure out 
if your employer has at all considered this, and what kind of systems, if any, they have put in place to cater for it. I'm going to give you a quick glimpse into the policies that we have at that. We deal with our maternity policy in our employment contract. The main takeaway about the batch maternity policy is that we ensure that maternity leave will be paid. You will be supported during this time. You will not be expected to return to work before it is necessary. And if you lose your child, you will be put on mandatory leave and you will have the studio support with regards to getting help and resources. How do you go about structuring overtime in a company that has no working help? You focus on the agreement that has to happen between the employee and management. It's management's responsibility to request it fairly and to manage projects to the best of their ability that over time is not the rule, but the exception. Our employees have the full right to deny overtime at any point, regardless of the project status or circumstances. Our sexual harassment policy is pretty much standard, and that's thanks to the stats that Lene provided. Everybody has one because it's so rife. So we really didn't have to dig too far for this one. The most important aspect to note of our sexual harassment policy is that we acknowledge that harassment can happen between same sexes. We take incidents like this very seriously, and we have some non-negotiable consequences. Please take note that in your lucky packets, we have provided a QR code where you are free to go download all of our policies so you can take a look at them in detail. If the Google link doesn't work, I'm old. Please let me know. <laughs> our solar system, how do we One of the most challenging things to do within your professional environment is to navigate its hierarchy. And it doesn't matter what you end up calling it in your, you know, our brains function and work with hierarchy. And without it, we'd all be fucking lost. Our approach is a little different, though. Instead of plotting our company organogram from top to bottom, we've taken on a circular system. Our system works with bands, and each band represents a level. As you grow and progress, your position in the system changes, and you can jump to a new band. Here you can see our inner bands. These bands contain our core team, stating their position, level, and who their lead is. Zoom out a bit further, and you can see our outer bands. They consist of HR, new business, and the main company stakeholders. We specifically opted to go about it this way because we don't base hires and determine levels on the years of experience of our candidates. We're in an industry where the amount of self-taught creators are starting to weigh up to the traditionally taught creatives with degrees. Alongside that, we've made it impossible to read this thing from top to bottom, completely eliminating the idea of needing to climb some kind of corporate ladder. Instead, it's a process of working your way inwards as you grow and evolve. Let's talk about growth, development, and how we go about hiring. Each employee at Batch has a full view of their possible career journey. This entails a few things, so let me start at the top. We call our employees contributors. We have baseline levels one, two, three. Um, you know, for the patriarchal structure, something that we would all read as being a junior, mid, and senior, right? For contributors interested in growing into more leadership-based roles, we have levels four and five. We then follow up these levels with a role breakdown. Yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. The salary bracket for each is in the role breakdown, and 13 checks are guaranteed. Remember, everybody in the studio has got access to this information at all times. The role breakdown provides context for our contributors regarding their salary bracket, job title, response hours, and studio benefits. You will notice we currently have a healthy away from keyboard benefit of 500 Rand 
The aim of this is that our contributors can put it towards anything that takes them away from their laptops. Each batch contributor also has one full day paid leave per month. This does not come from their leave cycle, which they can use to get their life stuff done. This is stuff like renewing license discs and seeing doctors, or it's even for the I can't fucking deal and I need to stay in bed mental health day, right? Side note, we don't care whether you use this day on a Monday or a Friday to create a long weekend because we believe that we do not get to give you time and then dictate how you're supposed to use it. I believe that employees who allow their employ employers who allow their employees to work from home, imagine that, um, should be covering the overheads that the employees are liable for when they are working in their home studios. Essentially, the employer should be contributing to the employee's overheads, right? From next month, we will be contributing to all of our contributors' overheads, regardless of whether they choose to work in office or not, so that they can put that warning towards what they need, when they need it, and how they need it to get the job done. After the role of breakdown, each level has its set out responsibilities for that role. Like you would get in your typical job description when you apply for jobs. Anybody done that recently? Let's fast forward a few years into that job and you don't know what's expected of you anymore because even though you have grown and progressed in this company, no one has walked up with new rules, guidelines and expectations for you though. Sounding familiar? You'll notice that along with the daily tasks, we also have a column dedicated to self-development. This provides a guideline to all contributors on which soft skills they should be working on alongside their technical skills. For each level, there's a set out list of responsibilities and self-developmental, oh, big word, Afrikaans school, Jesus, sorry. <laughs> self-developmental areas catering to that level's expectation. The rest of the process is really simple. Meet the set out responsibilities and you jump a level, regardless of your years of experience. This methodology gives our contributors career autonomy. Their progression is in their hands and they can choose a speed of progression which suits them and serves them the best. Our batch home base is always in development. As we grow, we learn. As we learn, we adapt, and that allows us to continuously change and shape our professional environment to what suits us best. Whoever woke up once upon a day and decided what the traditional creative company structure needs to be like and work like is dead. So fucking wake up and realize that you've actually always had the right to do it on your own terms. As creatives, freelancers, employees, employers and individuals, we often find ourselves approaching studios to have them ask us what we can offer them. When in fact, it should be the other way around. A studio is only as great as its staff and the relationship should be symbiotic. The, sh the studio should also be asking what they can offer you to help you grow and have the freedom and opportunity to show up as your best creative self. When I started talking, which now feels like a year ago, I'm sorry, I said that I had a hard time understanding why companies and studios cannot be more human-centered. Because nothing that we are doing business-wise is in any way remarkable. To top it off, Making a shift towards creating and fostering a healthy, professional environment just stands to benefit both parties. So I ask you, why not? I will end using ourselves as an example, because that is the only reference point that I have. This is Batch. I am Daniela, an entrepreneur with way too much ambition. I'm also a mom who needs the freedom to step away at 4 p.m. every day so I can fetch my son from school and spend some time with him. I can come back later when the time suits me better to continue working 
because Batch doesn't hold me accountable to a set structure of working hours. I can show up in the hours in which I can be most productive, regardless of how scattered those may be. That was me. <laughs> this is Catherine. Catherine loves doing everything. Hi, Catherine. She's live. She's in Kuzuruna. Today it's illustration, tomorrow it's our animation, and who knows what's next. Catherine deserves not to be put in a limiting creative box. Creativity is fluid, and she deserves to explore it. Catherine benefits from the freedom and autonomy she has to meander as she grows her creative skill set. Batch, in turn, benefits from her ever-expanding creative skill set. This is Jessie. Jessie's currently on a plane on her way to some overseas land for a lovely holiday. So. Jessie is a talented creative with a Dwell Magazine taste level. But her human need is being part of actionable change in her community. She has started a creative community outreach which Batch is supporting and funding. This outreach aims to pitch a creative career as a viable option to students at school level and to show them what opportunities they can have, when in most cases they don't even have money for a tertiary education. This is Viola. Viola starts her day with yoga, and she ends her day by making sure that she takes a long walk while the sun sets. Her life outside of Batch is as important as her life inside of that. And because she is allowed and can put herself first, she can be her best creative self at Batch. This is Magdalena. She lives in Edinburgh. She is a creative organizational wizard who prefers to be available during and for specific hours. She makes lists, takes shit off, and moves on. Magda is the reason that survived lockdown, and she continues to support us fully, even though she was just a contractor. This is Lindy. Lindy is our HR, and she's also a contractor. She has the opportunity at Batch to help us grow and cultivate our environment, and to set up our policies and standards according to our vision and goals. Because of Lindy, Batch has a solid structure. Meet Tamsin. Tamsin is the newest member of our team. She's a talented illustrator with eight years of experience in her craft. But Tamsin wants to grow as a creative leader. At Batch, she has had the freedom to step into a leadership role where she's allowed to make mistakes as she grows herself and becomes the head of her team. She told us what she wanted and we plotted out her path and timeline there within her first week of working with us. This is Lynette. Lynette has more ambition, drive, and tenacity than I've ever witnessed in any cis white male. She's one of those annoying anomalies, and it's at the same time also that horrible person who can try something out for the first time and fucking nail it, right? Lene has so much to offer Batch and believes that she shouldn't have to stand back or wait her turn. And I agree. Naturally, she has then taken on the role to be our 25-year-old creative director with four years of work. That is the end of my presentation. <laughs> we now open the floor to Q&A.